Hey, you guys, welcome back. Sorry, I'm trying to get this photo of my tweet so that way I can um, cast it up on the video when I'm editing. But um, welcome back to my channel. I hope y'all are doing all right today. I'm doing okay. Um, I have been sitting on whether or not I wanted to cover this topic for uh, the last few days, you know, since the situation erupted. And I feel like I'm bringing a different perspective that nobody has really wanted to be 100% about. And I feel like it's important in these conversations to um, hmm, look at things from different perspectives and not just come out flying with a cape. You know what I'm saying? So this is not a, you know, Nick Cannon, bro, we got you video. That's that's not really what this is. This is a different perspective. Excuse me. Now, I'm not going to start off being negative or what I would call critical, but I know most people are going to perceive as negative. Um, I will start off, you know, saying that for what Nick Cannon has created as far as Wild and Out and uh, just his whole repertoire of his career. You know what I'm saying? He's a hardworking man. He's a hustler. Nobody can take that from him. I will give him that. And Wild and Out, what that show did for families across globally, you know what I'm saying? I, I'd be willing to say globally, the impact that they made, it was better for them to just cancel the show versus try to get a new host because nobody could recreate that feeling other than Nick Cannon. Not saying that he did it alone. Obviously, he had everybody's help. Whether or not you agree with, you know, the some of the newer cast, the quote-unquote social media in, um, uh, comedians, whether or not you agree with them, you know what I'm saying? All those people had people laughing from back when the show just started to up to now. So I can give him that. Um, now, my thoughts on Nick Cannon, the whole tip. I was pretty much done with Nick when he said that Mariah Carey was black. Then when he said he should be able to sleep with white women and still be pro-black. And I have mixed feelings on that. My main two issues with that statement is, one, y'all would not give black women that same energy. Um... They don't even have to come out and disparage black men like celebrity black men do all the fucking time. Like Serena Williams is a bed wench and everything. Else. I don't like to say words like that, but she's a bed wench, a mammy, all that shit just because she's with a white man. So is Eve. Um, Eve doesn't get as much of the brunt of it because Eve is brown skin, whereas Serena's dark skin. Um, Y'all don't want to address the colorism there. That's another problem I have with a lot of hoteps. But nonetheless, <laughs> we ain't going to talk about that refer to my colorism video. But um, nonetheless, yeah, y'all don't give that same energy to uh, black women. Y'all actually, and y'all act like they're the only ones who get upset when people date outside of their race. Everybody is tribal, naturally. So anybody, a white man seeing a black, in fact, y'all know this shit. Y'all know this shit. Y'all try to brag in white men's faces that you're taking their women with your BBC. <laughs> Isn't that a thing? That's a whole section on Pornhub. And y'all feed into that validation, whether or not you realize it. And it got a lot of y'all think y'all thinking y'all look a lot better than y'all is. But let me, let me relax. We ain't here to talk about that. We'll cover that on another video. At any rate, um, so that's my one issue. And then two, you should not be the loudest pro-black on the mic if you're dating interracially. You should just like, okay, you lucky we even let you in the meeting. You should sit in the back or in the middle to back row. Sit quiet. Like, don't be on the mic being loud as hell and you with Becky. Or you with Karen's daughter. You know what I'm saying? Y'all cracking all these Karen jokes, but you fucking her daughter and mating with her daughter. And creating a legacy for her daughter and your mixed kids that are not black. So that's just a few inconsistencies I have a problem with the whole, um, as far as black men saying they should be able to sleep out and swirl and still be pro-black. Um, other issues I do have, but those are my main two in no particular order. Sometimes I feel more strong about point one. Sometimes I feel more strong about point two. Nonetheless, I don't want to drown on too much with that. Um, as far as my per current co political stance, I am pro my people who are pro my people. So that means black period. It's not no light skin versus dark skin bullshit. It's not no whether or not you agree with their lifestyle. It's not no anti-LGBT, oh, you can't sit with us, you know what I'm saying, um, homophobic shit. I don't play none of that shit. I'm just pro my people who are pro my people. You don't got to agree with what everybody does. 
I don't agree with some of my family members smoking their lives away with cigarettes, but I'm not finna go up in their face and tell them what they're doing is wrong in the sin of God. I don't got time for that shit. So at any rate, my thoughts on his comments. I cannot agree nor disagree on his comments because I have not done enough um, of my own research. You know what I'm saying? I haven't, you know, really tuned into... I have Google tabs and stuff like that open, and I do have a list of books I need to read, um, not even just on um, certain, you know, histories of, you know, what really happened with Africa and black people, but, um, you know, uh, No Name, the rapper No Name, a few books that she's mentioned on Twitter for her book club I want to look at. Um, there's a YouTuber on here who's very into prison abolitionary, uh, abolition, prison abolition, and, um, you know, they also discuss prison reform. I do want to look into some of the people that they've had on their uh, platform and um, check out their books. So there's a lot of stuff I want to learn in general, but keeping it real, I work a lot. Even it, though we're in the pandemic, I've been back to work, I think, two months now. Um, I have my own side business. I do music. Um, what else? I do music. I do YouTube, you know, I'm on, I'm on here, I'm doing my podcast, I'm always thinking of new ways to do shit. Um, I've been trying to work out at least five days out of the week. Like, I just have, I'm stretched out everywhere. So I'll get to it eventually, but I mean, right now, the last de uh, deep thing I've delved into when it comes to, you know, anything hotep or, you know, woke is Hidden Colors, The War of 1804. And that was like two years ago. <laughs> so... Um, I'll tune in every once in a while for some pro-black stuff on YouTube, but as in physical reading and research, it's been a while. So I can't say what he said is true or not true. Um, however, what I can do is give my perspective, and I'm going to tell you where Nick Cannon went wrong. So right here, now you see my tweet that um, I tweeted out about the whole thing, the whole situation. Um, and it reads... The cognitive dissonance of the quote-unquote woke folk is astounding. You cannot go on a white-owned radio station and talk about white daddy while he's paying you his white dollars. Nick Cannon literally bit the hand that fed him. What did you think would happen? I'm really confused on this situation, and that's why I also tag this false equivalencies as well, because I see a lot of black people trying to bring up the fact that um, white people and maybe some other races of people get to say um, anti-black rhetoric on podcasts, on radios. And I've heard that stuff before. I think a radio person was trending maybe three years ago. He said some shit, and I think maybe Waka Flocka replied or something like that. Or maybe it was about Waka Flocka. I don't know. But he said a hard ER N-word. And the problem with these situations and black people trying to correlate them um, is kind of similar to the whole Harvey Weinstein R. Kelly situation, which I mean, Harvey Weinstein, I think he's, he's, oh uh, yeah, he's finally in jail now, but um, we're living in a white supremacist world, and white people are not really the issue per se, not all of them, um, but white power is, so when you're functioning as a minority or a marginalized group in a dominant society, and you're not the dominant person, there is going to be stuff that the dominant society can do that your black ass can't do. So if they want to go in there and spew anti-black rhetoric on a company's payroll that is white owned, and keep in mind I said white power is really the issue. Companies have people who are in power. So why do you expect some old fart, 86 year old CEO to worry about what somebody is saying about black people? That's my real question. That's a false equivalency. That's not the same thing as Nick Cannon getting on his podcast saying what quote unquote anti-Semitic stuff he said about Jewish people, knowing damn well, well, I mean, his music career ain't really a real music career, but they run Jewish people. You know what I'm saying? They run the music industry. They run that shit. You know what I'm saying? They're in places of power everywhere. They're building for their women in their community. You know what I'm saying? And that, that I mean, that's a harsh truth. They are. I mean, I'm not, that's not really a jab at black men. I mean, it, but it is what it is. They're building. So they have the power to get your ass off of, to get your ass removed. You know what I'm saying? Especially being that, I mean, yeah, Jews and white people are not necessarily the same, but they can identify with them more than they could us. 
you know what I'm saying as far as physical appearance goes and all that stuff. And um, yeah, you can't go in a white corporation speaking blackity black stuff. Let's keep, let's keep it real. Do y'all do this on your day to day job? You might speak to your black coworkers about certain things, but when your white boss walks in, are you gonna ask him if he's Republican or Democrat? Are you going to sit there and ask him if Black Lives Matter? Like, people, let's be real here. And yes, Nick Cannon, do not get me wrong. His job may seem more lax than yours. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's just the disconnect between celebrity and civilian. But he's still clocking in and doing a job. There are still companies paying him to do his job there. And if he has business relations with multiple people and he says something they don't like, they have the right to pull away from him. I'm not saying what he said was wrong. I'm not saying it's right. I don't know. I don't know. But a golden rule that we can learn from this is the workplace is not an appropriate setting for discussing politics of any kind, black, white, Democrat, Republic, keep all that shit at home. And let me tell you why. Mixing personal and business together can turn toxic and quick. And we can see how that played out here. You know what I'm saying? So let, let's be, I understand the outrage and it's fucked up, but they have paid the cost to be the boss. That's not saying that they got there and, an, uh, and by they, I mean the dominant society, not Jews, but white people, let's just be honest. The dominant society, they have paid the cost to be the boss. Now, whether they did it by slavery or um, raping, pillaging, whatever. They didn't do it in the most morally ethical way. But the point is we have a system in place. That system benefits them. So they are okay to go on a white-owned station and talk about black people. They don't give a fuck. Nobody gives a fuck. They might, they might get fired for appearances. You know what I'm saying? But it's the same with these cops. They'll find another job. They're going to find somewhere else. They might go from one radio station to another, just like these cops go from one county to another. You know what I'm saying? They have a system in place that allows them to do that. And I'm not saying this to create a defeatist attitude where it's like, oh, well, we just shouldn't fight for anything. No, the solution to this is I saw Diddy reached out to Nick and he said he can come over to revolt. I don't know if he was serious about that, but if he is, you know what I'm saying? Although I have issues with Diddy as well and some of his... um behavioral antics or behaviors but if he should um if he was serious then that's something they need to get on the ball and do you know what i'm saying instead of sitting here demanding viacom give nick wild and out which i can say i can say that i do believe he deserves wild and out i can say that but instead of him demanding that he needs to go ahead team up with diddy do what he needs to do and you know what I'm saying? Best revenge is your paper. Go on about your life. You know what I'm saying? Like I said on my tweet, you bit the hand that fed you. You know what I'm saying? And sadly, when you take these harsh political stances, whether or not they are harsh in the eyes of black people, they are harsh in the eyes of the person who pays your paycheck or who writes your paycheck. You know what I'm saying? Granted, it wasn't um, whoever uh, runs Cannon's class. I don't know if he's a, it, that's an independent podcast that he owns or I don't know what's going on there. But granted, it wasn't them, but it affected, affected another one of his business relationships. So as I said, don't mix personal, personal and business. I, and I understand the podcast is a bit more of a relaxed um, work climate. So I understand it's easy to get comfortable. And just, I mean, look, I one of the podcasts, well, um, one of the podcasts I listen to is Angelie's Lip Service. Um, so I know that podcasts can get very re comfortable and relaxed. And it can get easy to want to, you know, talk like you're at a sleepover or some shit like that. But you got to watch what you say. You know what I'm saying? Every action has a reaction and repercussions. And you know what I'm saying? I mean, Nick Cannon, he will be all right. He, he has, he's, third, what, 39 now? And he has been you know in the biz since the 90s he'll be okay he, he will definitely be okay um but you know what we can learn from this is there's an appropriate time an appropriate place is it right necessarily uh yes and no but at the end of the day like i said if you're working in the dominant society's place of business you can't talk about the dominant society that's just common sense. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to go to a Chinese restaurant and start screaming Chinese virus while I'm waiting on them to wait for uh, cook my food. That's not smart. Odds are my shit is going to get spit in. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying? What do you expect? Um, and that would be my question to black people. I don't know what outcome they expected out of this. I definitely knew he was going to get some backlash after I heard what he said, but I didn't know they were going to, you know, pull the plug on him that quickly. But, um, yeah. Um, and he still has the masked singer, if I'm not mistaken. They decided to keep him on after um, he was pretty much forced into an apology. Um, so he still has that. Nick Cannon will be okay. Um, yeah, I, that's really all I have to add here. Um, like I said, it's fucked up, but the alternative is to build our own shit. And no, BET is not black owned. <laughs> so, and, and uh, come to think of it, Revolt wasn't even black owned to find out. There was a fucking, uh, what was she mixed? It's Hispanic? I don't know. She wasn't black. I could say that much. She was the CEO. She just stepped down. So what he needs to do, did he? is bring in somebody who is black to be his CEO or he needs to take over as CEO, whatever, and get in contact with Nick Cannon if that's what you want to do. And he can speak all that blackity black stuff on a black platform. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, yeah, these people will allow you to speak, you know, or talk about Black Lives Matter here and there and this, that, and the third. But you can only go but so far with blackity black shit before your paycheck gets snippety snip snipped. And that's all I got to say on this. Y'all let me know what y'all um, think down below. I want to get a dialogue going about this. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you believe Nick should have apologized? Do you think he was right? Do you think he was wrong? Um, let me know what y'all think down below. Also, let me know what y'all think about how, you know what I'm saying? Although it probably hurt you to hear it, it was the truth. We're living in the dominant society. You can't just go off the handle saying any and everything about white people. You can't do that. Or Jews. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that's in power more than us, and we're, we have the least power out of all these races, just being honest. Um, so get in the game, build your own platforms, and you can discuss whatever you want on those platforms with no limitations. Um, so yeah, on that note, like I said, y'all let me know what y'all think down below, and I will get back to y'all on the next video. Peace.